In this video, we'll discuss the limitations of data and how we can't always find conclusions with the data that's collected or displayed. So what are data limitations? There are limitations to what we can conclude from examining the data and data visualizations. So visualizations can be misleading if someone has skewed the axis or the labels, or if they've left out data that's important. Take a look at the two graphs here. These are actually displaying the exact same data, but in different ways. Do you see what's different between them? The graph on the left does not start at zero. In fact, it only goes from 3.14 to 3.154. Very small difference. But the way that it's displayed definitely makes it look like these interest rates have increased dramatically, right? And they've only increased a tiny bit. So this is a truncated y-axis. And this is a problem when the display is not starting the y-axis at zero. In the same way, this pitcher has only dropped two miles per hour in speed for his knuckleball. The second bar looks like it's half of the first one though, right? They've made it seem like the change was drastic when it really wasn't. Data can also be omitted or left out to make it seem like there's a trend. The graph on the right makes, makes it look like it's constantly increasing at a steady pace. But when you compare it to the graph on the left, you can tell that there's not a steady increase. It actually goes up and down quite a lot. Another way that data can be misleading is when convention is broken to try to trick the viewer. Take a look here. Pie charts should always equal up to 100%. And then each slice of the pie should accurately display its percentage of the whole thing. Here, it looks like the city is contributing half of the funds. But when this data is correctly displayed, the city is actually contributing a lot more. Lastly, correlation or a connection between two things does not imply causation or the act of causing something. When we look here, we have the total revenue generated by arcades and it does correlate with computer science doctorates awarded in the US. They seem to grow at the same, the same rate, but this doesn't mean that they cause each other. We don't know if those computer science doctorates are going to arcades to celebrate their new degree. It's not something we can pull from this data. It's important to be critical of the visualizations that you see to make sure that they're actually representing true information. You can do this by looking at the metadata or the data about the data. So where was this data collected? Who collected the data? How long ago was the data collected, right? How large is the data set? You wanna make sure it's enough to actually pull the information out of it. Now this really goes back to the scientific method. In order to test a hypothesis, you need to collect the proper data that can prove or deny the hypothesis. Computers can help with this. So some questions can't be answered if we don't have the correct data. So you can't plot trend lines over time if you only have data from one year. It's not enough information. And then you can't determine worldwide opinions if you only interview Americans. So those are the data limitations that you should be aware of. And that's an overview of the limitations involved when collecting data.